Here, I thought it would be at least a year before I got to use this title. <laughs> I've never been so wrong in my whole life. Gotham Knights is a steaming pile of dog shit that follows in the footsteps of illustrious titles like Marvel's Avengers and Saints Row by hiring the top guys for top dollars so that they can perfectly concoct the most generic, boring 2022 AAA game ever and also some devilish temptation. <laughs> Let's kick this off by talking about this fancy new gameplay. WB Games decided to take the if it ain't broke break it approach with this one they said fun no 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 not on our watch and if the last two sentences sound a little familiar to you that's because i used these exact words in my saints row review and copy pasted them into this review because they're doing the same exact shit here the classic batman formula hell the classic superhero game formula is to have a very effortless spectacle fighter style combat that makes you feel stronger faster better than the average human because you are better. You're a superhero. So why the fuck does Red Hood move like a retired 60-year-old linebacker with shoddy knees that takes 10 minutes to make it from the couch to the fridge? This free flow combat is about as free flowing as bedrock. What happened to my 30 second fights? I am a trained meat beater under the meatiest beater in all the land, and yet somehow my fights with this big bitch have to take a decade. And before you make a fool out of yourself by saying some of that dumb shit like, hey, you're under level. My brother in Christ, it it doesn't matter. Right here I am level 4 and that dude is level 3, yet I have to pound them a thousand times like a goddamn schnitzel until my skill wheel is finished charging and I can end my suffering. Oh, but that's a brute. Well then here's a level 4 grunt. What is it this time? Is it because they have a fucking tracksuit on? And I know the common sentiment among redditors is, ugh, don't compare this to Arkham Knight. Why? Because that 7 year old game is actually good? Now before I talk about the expansive skill tree. Allow me to touch on these gamer word AI. I can't say the word here, but let's just say they didn't show up with all the other AI on the long bus. You get me? He's definitely still here. Don't you worry. I'm gonna get you back home to your big ass family. You go look that way. One time I was nearing the end of a mission and the game said, oh, you gotta sneak by all those guards. Then I proceeded to walk through, alert all the guards, and in a light jog, not even pressing the sprint button, mind you, I made it to the exit, looked back, and somehow they all lost me. Then I went outside where they didn't shoot me and went until all these beautiful strong police women walked into an invisible wall not even two minutes later. I'd like to pause the video right here to remind you this is one of the first $70 games on consoles. Now let's talk about that expansive skill tree. They should have just made a game that focused on one character alone because Jesus Christ I've stepped in puddles that are deeper than this skill tree. Each character has three skill trees for the three different arcs types, but you only actually get one regular combat ability from every tree, and the rest is just a bunch of filler buffs to pad it out. And once I got that one new ability, all my excitement for leveling up was gone, because I had nothing left to look forward to. One Polish father made a game that has a hundred times the skill tree this does, because you actually keep unlocking new abilities until the very end of the game. Big concepts here, people. And if one Polish father can do it, by God, you scrappy upstart WB Games you, I believe that you can do it too. And speaking of things done poorly, let's talk about this open world. Listen, I, I, I wasn't gonna talk about it. But then some guy commented that if I said anything negative about the open world, he'd have to unsubscribe. So I mean... <laughs> You know I have to do it too. I've seen corpses with more life than this city. This feels more like a generic reskin modern city with a lot of fog and neon rather than the actual Gotham City we saw in Arkham Knight. And that's being kind considering the empty streets, downgraded graphics, lack of people collision physics, lack of vehicle collision physics, which is hidden behind the annoying auto dodging feature. And hang on, let me do the train test real quick. Yep, didn't budge an inch. And while we're on the topic, how the hell do you break an 80 story? fall by grapple hooking into the big J man's balls. That's just some fleek thoughts with the fleek for you. Anyways, I hope I answered your ultimatum properly. Now go and subscribe. Do it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which, let's talk about Red Hood, shall we? Now I'm no comics expert, but if this isn't the most bitch made version of Red Hood I've ever seen, giving off more vibes of angsty, edgy, overly sensitive teen that lashes out than the confident, witty, twisted killer with conviction for his methods that he 
should be. In Under the Red Hood, he's throwing a bag full of heads onto a table and taking over the drug trade like a proper psychopath. Here, he's making pasta, and Dick's like, oh, remember that time when Bab- I died, Dick! Didn't you hear? Remember, this is the man, the myth, the undead legend, beaten to a pulp and blown up by the Joker, then resurrected. And they have this man sending emails about snickerdoodles and playing just fucking dance. But wait, there's more. Now that he's going through therapy, he's in a transitional phase, and he doesn't kill people anymore. What is this great value Red Hood? Now this brings me to the story. Actually, the strongest point of this game, if you can believe this game has one. You are a conspiracy theorist group hunting down the Illuminati of Gotham while fending off a ninja takeover. Great, beautiful, wonderful, I love it. My only issue is with the ending. The ending is goofy as hell. For starters, to no one's shock, Batman is back alive again, except this time, thanks to the Lazarus Pit, he's got a demon in him. So now you have to perform a 300 bullet exorcism and then great, Batman is back, baby. What are we gonna do? Team up. The hell, Bruce? That's right. They brought back Batman just so that they could kill him again. However, Batman didn't die there. He actually hops up into his ship, and after the Court of Owls all show up out of nowhere for no reason, and Talia dips out after getting her ass beat twice, Batman decides to violate his biggest rule, but not before giving this heartwarming speech. It was never the criminals of Gotham that scared me. It's you. Want more. My brother in Christ, we go to the same country club. Check your privilege!